commandments of God are not grief. So a lot of times we say the hardest part of this truth is walking in righteousness. But in righteous, what, is, what does it mean to be righteous? Right here with the dreads. What does it mean to be righteous? Well, we learned 6.5. Which just says what? Right. So keeping the commandments is what makes us righteous. So now, read that scripture again. The book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 3. Come on. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. So now, give me uh, 3 John or 2 John 1 and 4. Let's see. Yes, 3 John 1 and 4. It's the book of 3 John, chapter 1, verse 4. Uh -huh. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Now, there's no greater joy than to hear brothers and sisters walking in truth. But now, is that walk in this truth, according to righteousness, is, should it be grievous to us? Should it, be, should it really be hard? Somebody help me. What's the hard part about walking in this truth as far as, uh, as the brother mentioned, walking in righteousness in this truth? What's the hardest part? What, what hinders you from walking in righteousness? Let me have the brother in the gray hoodie right there. What's the hardest part of that? Shalom, Shalom brother. Basically, like being around a lot of unbelievers. I like that. Okay. So being around unbelievers makes it difficult. Why? Because they look at you as strange now. Correct? They're like, man, why are you always talking that Bible? Tell me some stuff they say to you, bro. Because that, that, cause that's that's hard for you, correct? You, okay, they say, so they say you're in a cult. Okay. How many of y'all heard that before? Man, hey, if you ain't hear that, you might not be letting your light shine bright enough. But the minute you start letting your light shine, you start talking about the Bible, you start dressing different, you don't want to hang with the same people anymore, now you're evil. So wait a minute. I want y'all to really wrap your mind around how crazy we are as a people. Thank you, brother. Thank you. When you were getting drunk, falling down the stairs every weekend, throwing up on your own shoes, you would get, you ever seen them, you wish put up a video when the people smoke K2 and they start having seizures in the street, flying downstairs head first? You weren't in a cult then. You weren't in a cult where you was going from woman to woman to woman to woman or man to man to man. You weren't in a cult then. When you start doing what God says, you're in a cult. <sighs> Read that uh, third John again. Book of third John, verse four. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. So there's no greater joy than that, right? So here's the thing. We'll go to two more scriptures for the brother in the hood. Acts 24, verse 13. Acts 24 and verse 13. Write these down. The book of so it's so as the brother mentioned earlier. Okay, so it's difficult to walk in, in in righteousness. Well, I'm glad the young man. What was your name again, brother? Right here. Messiah. Sila. Messiah. Messiah. I like that. I like that. That woolly hair. Say it again, brother. <laughs> Say it with your chest. <laughs> so. But I, what I like, I like what the brother said because that actually is a part of answering the young man in the back a point. A lot of times the difficulty in walking in righteousness is because of who we surround ourselves with. Because when you're around us, we're not going to mock your fringes. We're not going to mock your beard. Well, if you got a little, little fuzzy peach fuzz, maybe, but other than that, <laughs> other than that, but we know whatever you can grow, just grow it. And it's not a mockery to grow whatever little you have. But when you're around the unrighteous, they're gonna look and say, man, what's that patchy stuff you got on there? They cut that thing off. At my job, they tell, um, when, when somebody's thinning, going bald, they gonna walk around and say, just cut it all off, man. Just let it go. Let it go. No, if you let it go, you're in sin. You see the point? So the people you hang around does affect greatly your walk in this truth. 
So your walk is righteousness. What's pulling you back is the world. We're going to go into that some more as well. So read that in Acts. The book of Acts, chapter 24, verse 13. Come on. Neither can they prove the things whereof they now accuse me. So now, can they prove you're in a cult? No. They did the same thing to our forefathers. When our forefathers started to follow Christ, they were like, you in a cult. And what, what, what did our forefathers say? They can't prove that. Because what we're going to show you is we're following everything that God said. But keep reading. Verse 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. You see, you see, you see what you see what was said here. This is I want you, I don't want y'all to ever forget this. They call you following the laws and the prophets a cult. I want y'all to see that. This, the same thing that they're saying to you today, they were saying of old. Everybody see that? Yes, no, maybe so. The same thing. So now what they called it, they called it a heresy. They said, actually, what you believe in is against God. He said, no, I believe the laws and I follow the prophets. Go ahead. And have hope toward God. Uh huh which they themselves also allow, that there shall be a resurrection of the dead, uh -huh. both of the just and unjust. So now, these are the things we believe today. The things that they call a heresy, the things that they call a cult. First, you can't prove that. Are, are, we, are we sacrificing little babies with, uh, to people with billy goat heads? No, we're not. And what you, and what you see is, our forefathers did not squirm at the term cult. They didn't get sad. They didn't walk away with their head, their head down. Because read verse 14 again. Look at Acts chapter 24 verse 14. Uh -huh. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so they call it a heresy. They are going to call it a cult. Go ahead. So worship I the God of my fathers. He said, that's how I worship the God of my fathers. He stood boldly. Our forefathers stood boldly when they were falsely accused of being in a cult, of being in a heresy. Because they can, we can go into the Bible and show them why we do what we do. Everything we do, we can show them biblically. So is their problem with you? No. Their problem is with God. They don't hate you. They hate God. Never forget that. They're not mocking you. They're mocking God. Because you are the walking manifestation of God himself. You understand that, bro? You are the walking, the way we're supposed to walk, as the brother mentioned earlier, we're supposed to walk exactly as Christ walked. Did they mock Christ? They did. Did they, did they throw him into prison? Yes, they did. Did they put him to death? Yes, they did. So when I say you're the walking manifestation, you got to be ready to take on all of those things that's going to come upon you for Christ's sake. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. So you got to really, really get your mind ready because the war is not only against the unrepentant of our people. The war is not only against the other nations. The war is against sometimes brothers that do the same thing that you do. So as you grow in this truth, it builds you up to, to, to endure all of those different trials that's going to come your way. Paul gave told us as well, trouble by countrymen, trouble of false brethren, trouble of the nations. This is what's going to happen. And our first dosage of that usually begins with the unrepentant of our people because that's who we're closest with. That's who we're around when we first come into this truth. So you, that's the first time you're going to get a dosage of what I just mentioned. All right? Uh, read 14 again, please. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, Believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. He says, listen, call it a heresy or not, but at the end of the day, I'm going to continue to believe all things written in the laws and the prophets. You can't let what people say about you alter your faith. Never let them make your walk difficult by what they say. Now, give me that in Job um, 19. Job, I gotta look at it. 
Job 19, is it 19? Yes. Job 19 and verse, start at verse 1. It's the book of Job, chapter 19 and verse 1. Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me? So now, this is very important. Job says, how long are you going to continue to beat me up with your words? Because the more you do so, is the more you seem strange to me. What happens when you come into this truth? The people that you were closest with, the people that you grew up with, your, your family members that you know better than anybody else in the world, they, they treat you a certain way because of this truth. They become, they become strange to you. It's not you becoming strange to them. You see the point? They're the strange ones because they're still falling away from God. You're coming back to God. So now you're well known. You're known to the Lord. You're known to Christ. You're known to the angels. They now say, that is my brother. That is my son. He now looks familiar to me. He's not acting like the other nations. He's not acting like a daggone heathen. He is now known of me. We read it earlier at camp. The angels rejoice in heaven over one that repents. But now when they use those harsh words to break you down, telling you you're in a cult, they should look strange to you. You understand that? You look at them strange. They're going to look at you strange, but you look at them strange. Give me that 1 Peter 4 and 3. 1 Peter 4, verse 3 and 4. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 3. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. So before, how long How long have you been in this truth? Yeah. Oh, oh, this is my third time. Okay, okay, so now, before, before you heard about this truth some months ago, right? The will of the Gentiles is, you can sit down. The will of the Gentiles is clubbing. The will of the Gentiles is whoremongering. The will of the Gentiles is reveling, like all that partying and Thanksgiving parade and, and Thanksgiving dinner, or, uh, Christmas dinner. That's reveling. So all of that is reveling. So it said, before you heard this truth, this goes for every one of us. Before we heard this truth, we thought it was good to do those things. Am I right? We would hang out with our friends, smoking weed, doing all kind of filth. The scripture says we thought it was good to do the will of the Gentiles. Sisters blonding their hair, brothers shaving off their face. That was actually normal for us, am I right? Is it just me? I'm the only one? That's gonna leave me out there on the limb like that, huh? Or pour my heart out, or leave me out on the limb. So at one time, I, I myself thought that was good. We thought the way out of the hood was either pitching drugs or shooting a jump shot or, or, or running over a tackle, something. But those are all the will of the Gentiles. But we thought that was the way to live. We thought that was good. We thought so. Read that again. Book of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 3. Come on. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. Our life passed. We thought it suffice means um, sufficient. We thought it was sufficient or pleasing to do the will of the Gentiles. Go ahead. When we walk in lasciviousness, in evil sexual thoughts, lust, lusting after different things. Go ahead. Excess of wine, getting drunk every weekend, reveling, partying every weekend, banqueting. Um, that's your Christmas dinner, your Thanksgiving dinner, your Easter dinner, birthday dinners. That's what the banqueting is going to. Go ahead. And abominable idolatry. And everything we exalt above God. We thought that was normal. So again, am I the only one who thought that was normal? No, sir. I know y'all was in there celebrating your birthdays too. So my ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all knew what that was though, huh? Yeah. Some of you young folks don't know what that was, but older folks know what that was. Go ahead. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them. That's why I mentioned earlier, you should look at your family, friends that mock you, saying you're in a cult as strange. Because you won't go with them to celebrate birthdays anymore, 
to, 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 eat un, uh, to eat defiled food anymore, to go to clubs anymore. They think you're strange. But, you're, but they're strange because they have went astray from their God. They're the strange one. God don't look at them as, as his children. Just like we, we, we were doing it, God didn't look at us as his children. We look like a bunch of strangers to him. When you read all the things, Isaiah 63 says we were enemies to God. We were enemies to God. It's, you, didn't, you, didn't, listen, you did not get right with the Lord until you repented and came up in here. I'm going to tell you straight. So we were enemies to God. We were strange to God. But now those same people that mock you, they look at you strange. Like the scripture just said. They look at you strange because you won't pay for all these abortions anymore. Um, we're not supposed to kill our kids. They look at you strange because you want to marry one woman and not run the streets anymore. They look at you strange because you don't want to be a drug dealer anymore. When you think about all of those things, is that not the core of the destruction of our people? That's, so they are okay with you destroying your people and they look at you strange for not continuing to destroy your people. You see how backwards we are? That's why I said, no, you look at them strange. They're the ones that's bugged out. Read that again. Wherein they think it's strange that you run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. What are they going to do? Speaking evil of you. You understand that now, bro? It's because you're not joining with them in sin anymore. Now they call it a cult. Now they call you evil. Now they say you're, what are you, you're brainwashed. We here, we. Bro, you, you miss your third Sabbath? Guess what? You got a long way to go. Because we got to endure this until the very end. We don't know if that's going to be next year or 20 years from now. Don't let that be a stumbling. It's for the young man in the back as well. Don't let those people be a stumbling block to you. Because guess what you can do? You can block them on your phone. You can delete them off your Facebook and Instagram. If, they, if, if, they, if they're a hindrance to you, as it says in Matthew 5, cut them off. Cut them off. Up, oh, please. Guess what? That's less stress for you. Sometimes it's hard. You know what it is? Let me show you how demonic Esau is. I'm going to share something with y'all. Esau spent a lot of time destroying our families. A lot of effort, a lot of money, a lot of evil thought upon their beds to sell your son to someone in Mississippi, sell your daughter to somebody in um, Texas. Your, your family's all over the place. So we have been bred with a longing to keep ties with people, even if they're toxic and bad for us. Y'all understand that? We've been bred to yearn for that tie. Why do you think there's so many gangs? Because our young sons and our young daughters long for a tie to something, even if it's bad for us. That, that's what plagues our people. Esau knew what he was doing when he separated us. He knew what he was doing because then we, we would, in, in the year, that's why Deuteronomy 20 and 48 says, um, have a yoke of iron upon our necks until we were destroyed. So now, they don't have to put a yoke of iron around our necks because now we have the yoke of gangs around our necks. We have the yoke of drug dealing around our necks. We have the yoke of whoredom and whoremongering around our necks. We're being destroyed by mental yokes that can take decades to release to be released from. So once we took off the actual metal, we were like, we're free. But then we took off the metal ones and put on the spiritual ones. We've been destroyed. To the point where when we destroy each other, we see it as good. And when you don't want to destroy each other anymore, you're seen as weak. You're seen as being controlled. You're seen as being manipulated. You're seen as being everything under the sun except a good brother or a good sister that wants to make a difference in themselves, their families, and their communities. That's sad. That's some sad stuff. Because now... Today, when a young man like himself try to do right, he's seen as a square. He's seen as a lame. He's seen as all these negative things that have been destroying our people forever. A young, I got you one second. A young sister that don't want to jump from man to man anymore. Oh, she thinks she's better than everybody else. You gave it to Tuan. 
You gave it to Ray Ray. You gave it to them. You can't give it to me now? Nah, she don't want to give it to you, bro. She's changing her life. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Sometimes we think the words we say are not impactful. Job said the elders that came to visit him, their, his, their words were actually breaking him into pieces. They were breaking him into pieces. Like, man, I was already going through it with the, that the Lord was putting me through. Now these brothers come here making it worse. You can throw fire on gasoline. This is why the scripture tells us we can't forsake the assembly. Because this is where you get built up. This is the only place everyone here doesn't think you're crazy or strange. This is the only place. Go to one of those little get-together with your friends and have on your fringes. You know, what the hell is going on with this brother here? They passing the blunt around. You don't want it. What the hell is wrong with you? They all getting drunk, grabbing all these little girls. And you just, I'm good. I'm out. I'm out. Where the hell are he going? Oh, you think you're too good for us? I have seen fights started with brothers who was trying to do the right thing. With sisters who was trying to do the right thing. They didn't want to destroy their people anymore. People have fought them. Fights break out. They start jumping on that person. I'm like, and I'm, I remember being young, and I'm like, this don't seem right. Now, I'm in the wrong circle, of course. But the most I always gave, to, not just me, to every one of y'all, y'all have been in situations that is similar to that, and you sit back like, this don't feel right. Am I right, sisters? You're right. Something right about this, but you can never really put your finger on it. All praises to the most high for this Bible right here. That's right. Makes sense. It all makes sense now. So I hope that answered y'all questions. I know I went the extremely long route, but all praises to the most high. Sometimes I get long-winded. Just bear with me. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Go ahead, bro. Say thank you, Lord. Touch your neighbor. Say neighbor. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. Shalom, Cal, brother Shalom. Israel. Shalom. Uh, what I struggle most is um, dealing with my supervisor. He uh, he saw and uh, he like a slave master on the horse when we had a job sometimes. So it's hard not to retaliate, but you know, I gotta keep my job. So. Damn. Um. Give me that in um, isn't it Jeremiah? Made us oh no Psalms made us Psalms Psalms one nineteen made us wiser than our enemies. Start at verse. Start at verse eighty nine. It's the book of Psalms chapter one nineteen verse eighty nine. Forever, O Lord, Thy word is settled in heaven. Mm -hmm. Thy faithfulness is unto all generations. Thou hast established the earth and it abideth. They continue this day according to thine ordinances. For all are thy servants. For all are thy servants. A lot of times we don't realize that um, the other nations only operate in the way that the Lord has them operate. Y'all understand that? When the Lord said he was going to use them as a whip against us, guess what they were? They were a whip against us. You understand that? All the nations have to serve the Lord. They just don't know it. They just don't know it. They, the Lord dictates what they do. So, what was it um, Proverbs 24? Man's goings of the Lord, or 20 and 24, something like that. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can he know his way? So don't think they went to the west coast of Africa because they had nothing else to do. Their goings was of the Lord, right? Okay, go ahead. Unless thy law had been my delight, uh -huh. I should then have perished in mine affliction. So unless the Lord is your delight, you would have already been fired. You know that, right? If it wasn't for the Lord that gave you some sense of restraint, you would have already been fired. Because in the world, I, I've seen Jews. Well, they didn't know they were Jews, but Jews knock bosses out. Left hook. Or wait for them in the parking lot or something crazy. You, you might get a chance to beat his behind, but guess where you're going after that? Jail. You're going to jail. Because we don't have self-control without God's laws. We're very impulsive. How many of y'all got a friend or family member in jail because they're impulsive? You see what impulse gets our people? God says, no, don't be impulsive. 
meditate on his laws and learn how to operate out of his laws. You understand that? Go ahead. I will never forget thy precepts, for with them thou hast quickened me. Uh -huh. I am thine. Save me, for I have sought thy precepts. Read verse 94 again. I am thine. Save me. This is something that we tend to sometimes overlook. We're in that situation. We think we need to retaliate against the boss for the way he's treating us. Don't you know that the Most High God is the one that can do more to him than you can ever do? Sometimes we got, I, I have to remind myself of that sometimes. But they'll do some stuff that'll take you off and you'll want to get back. Well, I'm going to leave this undone so when they come in in the morning, they're going to be crying because I ain't here to do it. You ain't hurting nobody but yourself. We don't realize that the Lord is the one who will save us from every situation, including the, the, the workplace. Go ahead. For I have sought thy precepts. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Isn't that what the brother just said? Isn't that what the brother just said? He, they got it out for you, right? Huh. Read that again. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. But I will consider thy testimony. No, I'm going to retaliate. I will consider thy testimony. Meditate on the word of God. God. God shows us how to have wisdom in the workplace. God shows us how to have wisdom in the workplace. You know how some, sometimes, you know how our co-workers and bosses get a leg up on us? Because we talk too damn much. You tell them all your business. You tell them... Yeah, my, yeah, I'm late on my babysitter bill, so I need these hours because of such and such. When you when you get on their nerves, what are they gonna do with your hours? Cut it. They gonna cut it because they know you need it. Y'all see the point? Sometimes we create our own mess because we talk too much. Stop telling these nations all your daggone business, thinking that's gonna gain you favor with them. It only gives them a leg up on you. Because now they got, say again, you, you're giving them the ammunition. When they know you going through this, man, the IRS just wrote me and I got to pay all this money. I don't know what I'm going to do. I hope I get some overtime. We see it as, listen, we try to plead our case to uh, ungodly people. They don't know what compassion is. They don't know what... Um, Sincerity is. They don't understand that stuff. Am I, am I right, brothers? Yes, sir. So as soon as you tell them something like that, guess what? They now say, that's how we're going to get him. We're going to hurt his pockets. He wanted to have some, what was a new moon anyway? Is that some kind of cult? He wants the new moon off. He thinks he's Jews. He thinks he's a Jew. What in car tar nations is wrong with him? They laugh in their break in their little uh, offices and stuff. They, they mock us. So now, when you talk too much and tell them what your issues are that you're going on in your personal life, now they like got them. They start cutting their hours. Now you more stressed out. But the Lord showed us how to deal. Read that again. The Book of Psalms, chapter one, nineteen, verse ninety-five. The wicked have waited for me to destroy me. But I will consider thy testimony. Come on. I have seen an end of all perfection, but thy commandments is exceeding broad. Uh -huh. Oh, how I love thy law. It is my meditation all day, See, all the day. That's, that's, I mean, I, I know we read it, but we be like, man, that's hard to do. I gotta, I gotta take the garbage out. I gotta, I gotta get myself a shape up. I gotta, we have everything else to do except meditate on God's laws. Even on the job, on your lunch break, eat your lunch fast and get in the scriptures. You got a half hour, eat, take 10 to eat, 20 to study. You got an hour? Oh, you got an hour? Oh, man. Take 10 to eat, take 50 to study. You see the point? Meditate on God's laws, man, so that, so that it's always at the forefront of your mind. Listen, when you are when you got the nations coming against you, you got the wicked of your people coming against you, what you going to do? Pull out a bat and chase everybody? No, you pull out the word of God and, let, and, and pray to him that you want him to fight your battles. 
Because when we, when we read, when the Most High fight for us, man, man, there ain't nothing we can do compared to what Most High can do for us. Nothing. Go ahead. Well, through thy commandments has made me wiser than mine enemies. You see that thing? So you know how to deal in a certain way that they don't. Eventually, they reveal how they truly feel. You understand? Eventually, they're going to bring it out. Eventually, I don't know if y'all saw that video in Atlanta where uh, the, they, we have a Moabite chicken spot a couple doors down. So the drug dealers that cuss us out every week want to fight with us every week. Moab had them lifting some heavy equipment out of his chicken spot and he paid them with watermelon. But it's under tutors. Hold on, hold on, get that, bro. Stop playing, bro. Wait, wait, wait. Do you mean to tell me the Chinese man just rewarded the black man by giving him watermelon? Tell me that didn't just happen. Psalms 44 and 14. Tell me that didn't just happen. He said, I thank you for your hard work. Here, watermelon. I know you like it. I know you like watermelon. He got a whole, a, a whole thing of wings in there. He couldn't get y'all a free platter? Y'all didn't see that? Their payment was watermelon. It's a wing spot. Give them some wings and fries or something. A couple of cans of sun kiss. They don't even sell watermelon there. It's a chicken spot. Where did they get watermelon from? No, he specifically bought it for the niggas. And they were happy. And they, they, they cussed us out. Watermelon juice dripping down their arm. Messing up their new J's. It's crazy. So the thing is, like I said, they, they will show you how they really feel. But you're wiser than them because you already know how they get down. You know what their real intentions are. You know how they really feel about you. Listen, what makes me nervous when my eating my coworkers come up to me and start smiling? I'm like, oh hell no, he snitched on me about something. <laughs> I'm waiting for the boss to come up next. I'm like, I know he done snitched. He was being too nice. Because you know how they get down. You have you knowing how they are spiritually, it makes you wiser than them. Because they're still trying to figure you out. You already know them. Why? Because you got the word of God that describes them to a T. You see the difference? So that's why you're wise. You know how to operate. The scriptures tell you, put, put a ball over your mouth. It says, wisdom is shown in a man that keep in silence. You ain't got to always tell them every day. And guess what? They won't have a leg up on you. And even if that's not the case, you're telling them every day. It teaches you how to deal with them. You understand? So don't worry about that. Go to the Lord, man. The Lord going to fight your battles for you. All right? All right, all praises. And, and what you start doing, after the Sabbath, fill out some new job applications. Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth.
So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.